بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وموالاه Dear students, this is lecture uh, 12. We are still dealing with problems in phonemic analysis. And after we finish with this, I'm going to talk about another topic, which is distinctive features. If you remember last lecture, we talked about one of the problems of phonemic analysis, which is the issue of ch and j, the affricates. Now I'm going to skip some points and move straight forward to the second and the last problem, which is related to the schwa. And I think that most of you have an idea about uh, the problematic issue of, of the schwa, uh, because we've talked about this, um, we have talked about this in, in uh, uh, last year. So, why the schwa is problematic? Because some scholars consider it a distinct phoneme. It's a phoneme by itself. And since it's a phoneme by itself, it should be enlisted in the list of phonemes of English. But some others still believe that it is not a phoneme, it's rather an elephant. It's not a phoneme by itself. It's a realization of a phoneme, not a phoneme, and should not be added to the list. So if we consider the schwa a distinct vowel, we should add it to the list, as I, as I have just said, of pure vowels, and the overall number of phonemes would be 11. So when you count the number of phonemes, the vowels, if you include the schwa, they will become 11. Phonemes. But if you do not regard the schwa as a phoneme, it's an allophone, we don't add it to the list, and the overall number of phonemes of vowels will be 10 only. Now let's see why the schwa is not considered a distinct vowel by some scholars. Why? What is the reason behind that? Actually, the first and the most important reason is that the schwa is always pronounced when function words, if you remember function words, when function words are realized in their weak forms. Their weak forms. As an example, we have the function word was the auxiliary verb if this auxiliary verb is pronounced in its strong form it will have an o sound o vowel but whenever this auxiliary is pronounced in in, in its weak form it becomes was and we have given several examples on that so whenever we have a function word which has a full vowel it is pronounced in its weak form this full vowel becomes a schwa so the schwa is an elephone of this full vowel besides sometimes we have a full vowel in a stressed syllable and when this stressed syllable is, becomes unstressed this vowel also changes to schwa so if a syllable has a full vowel like u, a, a, etc and this syllable becomes unstressed not strong the vowel will be changed into schwa the same idea so based on these examples those people consider the schwa as an elephant of all other pure vowels whenever they are pronounced in weak forms so whenever we have a weak form we have a schwa instead of the full vowel another reason is we cannot find the schwa in one syllable words in English it is only found in words with more than one syllable except for the case when weak forms are pronounced 
in their weak, when, when function words are pronounced in their weak forms, we don't have any English word in which we have a schwa and the word is one syllable. It should be two and more. Just like the word above, we can see that the first syllable is a schwa, a go, a side, etc. The th third reason is we cannot have many mulpers with schwa and any other vowel. If you remember, one of the basic techniques used in identifying the phonemes of a language is that we can use these phonemes in minimal pairs. The minimal pair has two items which are similar in everything except in one in one sound, in one phoneme. And that's and that difference makes a difference in meaning. We cannot have minimal pairs, two items, two words in which the, the difference is between the schwa and another full vowel. We cannot. That's why those scholars believe that the schwa is not a phoneme. We, can have it in, 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 we cannot have it in minimal pairs. Still, this point is controversial. Some, uh, the, the, the other side also has its own um, assumptions that schwa is a distinct vowel. Okay, now we move to distinctive features. What is that approach? Distinctive features is a theoretical approach that is important to the language learner and can be useful in language learning. So it is related to language learning. We can use this approach to make the learning of a language easier maybe based on this theoretical approach the phonemes are not independent units the phonemes are not independent units so we do not deal with the phoneme as a phoneme that is abstract it's rather considered as combinations of different features so each phoneme is not seen as a unit by itself it's rather a band a group of features that make that phoneme distinct that is individual distinguished from others or other phonemes these features are supposed to be distinctive what do you mean by distinctive the learner can use them to distinguish each and every phoneme from another. We can distinguish between phonemes, any one of the phonemes and another phoneme by using these features. The approach, I mean the distinctive feature, features approach, adopts a plus minus system, plus minus system to indicate the presence of the feature when the symbol is plus it means the feature is there or the absence of the feature when we have the minus it means the feature is not there the, the phoneme does not have that feature but if it is plus it means the phoneme has the feature so it is a dichotomy of plus minus system Either the feature is present or absent. Let's have an example. The sound se is a minus voiced sound. What do you mean by vo minus voiced? It means that there is no voicing here. It means it's voiceless. So we have the minus, which means the feature, this feature of voicing is not found. And you know, all of you, that the sound uh, is voiceless. There is no vibration in the vocal folds. So this refers to the absence of voicing. And se uh, is voiceless. Plus fricative refers to the presence of friction. Here we have friction. So this sound, this phoneme, se, uh, is a fricative sound. 
because we have friction plus and we need another feature which is plus alveolar which means that this sound is an alveolar sound so if we want to put that uh, these features in a set we say the sound set is minus voiced plus fricative plus alveolar okay now since we have different phonemes we should have at least one different feature between them so we don't have identical phonemes we may have similar phonemes but we don't have identical phonemes there is no need to have two phonemes that are identical in the language there should be at least one at least one different feature and there is a table on page 103 which shows uh, examples of phonemes that are analyzed using distinctive features now let's have a look at the vowels e and u and see if distinctive features can be used in learning the difference between them so e is plus close or you can say plus high if you like so this e is close vowel it's minus rounded it means it's n rounded vowel a rounded vowel it's minus long it is short minus long means it's short and it is plus front this vowel is produced in the front area okay plus close minus rounded minus long plus front now let's look at u it is also plus close it's also a high close vowel uh, it is plus rounded plus rounded this u is a rounded vowel and it's minus long if we stop here there is one different feature which may distinguish between these two but we can add uh, uh, another important feature which is minus front minus front you know that u is a bag vowel so we have here two different features between u and e u and e by using these features we can understand the difference between e and u okay you can see in the example above that we are not required to use all the features we have instead we use only the features that are relevant to the phoneme if we want for example to put the set of distinctive features for a vowel do we need the feature plus minus voiced the answer is no why why we don't need this feature because we already know that all vowels are voiced so there is no need to use this feature it is already known that all vowels are voiced moreover we don't need to use all the features relevant to the phoneme if even if the feature is relevant sometimes we don't need it the features that make the phoneme distinct are enough so we don't need to have a very long list of features if uh, three or four features are enough to make that phoneme a distinct one it's okay we uh, stop at this point and we leave at the features no need to uh, use and, 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 and analyze using all these features because there are so many features now um, let me end this lecture with this question give the distinctive features for the following phonemes t, m, and u okay thank you very much for your time I wish you